here. What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another Giants update video. And, you know, training camp is going on. Training camp things are happening. The players are practicing. The players are progressing. I will say the offense is doing great for its, like, third or fourth day in a row. So for anybody that um, was worried before training camp started about the offense or maybe early on in the process, how the offense was going to look, so far, so good is what I can say. Of course, I'm going to say the same thing I said back when the offense was struggling. It's still... Like, yep, still too early to say that the offense is fixed because we're in August and the season doesn't start until September. And until we see with our own eyes on the field, you know, them moving down the field, them getting into the end zone, getting touchdowns, scoring, and being a competent offense, until that happens, I'm going to continue saying it's too early to say that this uh, part of the team is fixed. But of course, it is a great sign that they're progressing so well. I think Daniel Jones went 745 straight passing attempts without an interception or like bad down or something like that so that was absolutely crazy according to R. Stippleton and he got uh, picked off by Radarius Williams today and Radarius in general was having a good day I told you guys when we got this guy what was it the sixth or seventh round one out of the two I think he was our last pick he, there's no way he should have been there Radarius was a guy in my opinion that should have went anywhere from the second to the fourth round in the draft but somehow he dropped all the way to us like very late and this was a cornerback that has a chance of being like a legitimate you know maybe number three starter in the league and we have him as just pure depth right now and he's definitely going to see special teams and whatnot but it's great that our secondary has a guy like him buried in the depth chart it just speaks to the quality and quantity that we have back there but of course the big story of the day wasn't training camp as it seems like it has been the trend for like the entirety of this week uh, Zach Fulton, the only lineman that we signed in the first wave of free agency way back in March, he has retired from the NFL. So this makes three straight players in this week that have retired from the Giants and four in total if you count Calvin Benjamin last week. But people are freaking out because they're like, oh my god, oh my god, players are retiring, what's happening here? I'm going to say real quick before I calm you guys down with logic, <laughs> let's look at another team, the Raiders. The Raiders, you know, obviously in the AFC and on the West side, uh, are a team that's, I would say, if you want to freak out about retirements, that's a team you should look to. The Raiders not only had three players retire in camp, but they also have four executives retire this offseason. Uh, but nobody's talking about them. Why? Because it's the Raiders. Now, they are in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a pretty good market. You know, it's up and coming in the sports world. But the fact that the Giants are in the New York metropolitan market is the main reason why you see all these articles, tweets, and everything kind of, I guess you could say, stretching the truth a bit or exaggerating the retirements of our players. It's just the fact that we're in probably the biggest, uh, you know, market in the NFL. I mean, LA is either first or a close second, but, you know, New York, the New York, New Jersey area is probably up there, I'd say, is number one. Um, you know, they know it sells. You know, these reporters and anybody who tweets about it, they know it sells. They know that when you make an explosive title with New York in it, that people are going to click on their article. And that's really the reason as to why it seems much worse than it is. When there's other teams, you know, if you want to talk about retirements, having way more problems than we are with seven total people retired and we only got like three and they're veterans too, right? So what I mean by that is they're a bit older and also they have certain expectations, and that's why I'm kind of glad these guys are off of our team. Now, I'm not speaking specifically to Fulton, but with the Todd Davis and Joe Looney, for example, with Todd Davis, it really seemed like he kind of came on the team, was kind of expecting to have a starting job handed to him when that's just not the philosophy that Joe Judge goes by. He goes by the best player is going to get that job. And in order to find out who the best player is, we're going to go through some intense training and practice. Um, Joe Looney retired, he said, he said, because his body simply could not keep up with the regimen anymore which i mean i respect your body is going to tell you more than anybody else when it's time to hang up the cleats and then now with zach fulton it seems like it may be a mixture of both um i got an article here from the post and let's read let's read off what they say they say the post uh ryan dunlevy reported from camp on friday that giants coach joe judge gave a lengthy response to fulton's retirement which judge said was both family and health related Fulton joins a veteran offensive lineman Joe Looney and linebacker Todd Davis as the Giants players whom recently left football. Judd said all players are good dudes, <laughs> it's hilarious that he called them good dudes, and welcome back their football circumstances change. 
Tight end Calvin Benjamin also said he was walking away from football after being released by the Giants last week. Fulton 29 signed a one-year deal worth $1.2 million plus a $137,500 signing bonus with the Giants one week after the Texans released him in March. A uh, judge noted that Loney and Davis's decision to retire was more private and personal. I'd say in both cases, not to speak for the players, but both of them had family situations that they had to attend to, and that was a large part of the decision. So there you go as well. I mean, it's not just, you know, what everybody wants to make it out to be. It's not just the coaching and the current program. These guys, it seems, have things in their personal lives that they got to get to, man. I mean, it, it's reminiscent of Kadarius Tony, for example, or a rookie wide receiver that so many Giants fans were ready to call a bust because he missed a couple practices, which in of itself is very, very stupid. Like there's there's no logic. The guy missed a couple practices. He hasn't even hit the field yet. And Giants fans were ready to call him a bust. They were ready to say we wasted a pick on him. Like, are you kidding me? It's it, his season hasn't even started yet. I, and then, you know, the reasons he missed a couple practices were couple practices weren't even his fault the first one was on the quality con control coach like they couldn't get the man the correct size equipment for him to safely be on the field and then there was a family emergency at one point and now it's revealed that that family emergency may potentially be the death of his grandma he's dealing with the death of his grandmother right now which is you know uh, i'm guessing he was very close to her but it's something that he has to deal with of course you know he has to move on and whatnot but you don't just move past that immediately and I mean, it really makes you, uh, for some of these Giants fans or fans in general that are ready to hop on him and, and start like raging, it's like, take your time, you know what I mean? But I'm not weird at all, guys. What this does mean is that we have a, well, not a lot, but we have a good amount of cap space back now because I think Looney and Davis were also on vet minimum contracts. So I'd say we have anywhere from three to five million dollars freed up. And of course, <laughs> I'm going to go back to what I went back in last video. There's a guy named Austin Ryder still on the market, Giants. I'm pretty sure he's meeting with the organization today or tomorrow. He is by far the best offensive lineman on the market. He was the center for Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs when they won the Super Bowl and last year as well. Uh, he is going to be a great inside offensive lineman if we pick him up. He's starting, no question. And he gives you the ability to shift around the line if need be. And of course, Giants fans have wanted this man since like, I don't know, March? And now we're here sitting in August and there's still a chance to get him. And I know these players, them retiring, there is like that major bright side to it where it's like, all right, now we kind of have enough money to actually go out and realistically sign Austin Ryder. The question is, does he want to come here? You know, does he uh, match up with the culture and whatnot? And to be fair, most of the players we signed this offseason do. You know, Kenny Galladay, he loves what Joe Judge is doing. Adoree Jackson, the new cornerback we got, they're all buying in. So Austin Ryder, he's also a bit younger, I'm pretty sure. I don't think he's as old as Joe Looney or Zach Fulton. I may have to double check on that. But he's a guy that's seen a lot of success in the NFL. He already has a championship ring in the NFL. He's somebody that definitely the Giants should take a look at. And at this point, I would say go ahead and sign him. Before, I was kind of iffy because of the fact that we had some veteran depth. Well, not that veteran depth retired. And all we got back there, I think, is Kenny Wiggins and a couple of undrafted free agents which to be fair our starting center currently was an undrafted free agent so it does work out every now and then but go ahead and definitely take a stab at austin rider giants that's it for today guys let me know what you guys think put your thoughts down below like share subscribe and i'm out thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share i'll catch y'all in the next one